So what I actually want to do is get rid of this completely. Oh no. And what I want to do is show you how you can use another sort of integral part of schematic is state machines. Mm -hmm. And so we can rebuild this logic using a state machine. And for this particular example, okay, maybe a state machine is overkill. But when you come to building more complex things, having a state machine to contain all your logic and separate things out is very, very useful indeed. So, so maybe if you could uh, explain what a state machine is in general. Uh, yeah. The underlying concept behind it. So, um, well, to give it its proper technical name, a finite state machine. It's splitting the logic of your object up into a finite set of states. I know that sounds stupid, but basically, so a player might have a state which is idle, where he's standing still, and then a very separate state which is move, and then another state which is attack. Okay. And we split it up into, instead of it being in one big graph that's handling all these different things and saying, if I'm attacking, do this, mm -hmm. we actually have very separate they're almost like their own unique objects, and they will only run one at a time. Gotcha. So then you don't have any con conflicts. Yes, yes, that's the idea. So in this case, it's a very simple state machine, and it will just have two states. There will be uh, an on state and an off state. OK. Um, now, state machines have their own special kind of graph. I like to call it the transition graph. And what we see here is we can't do traditional logic. What we get is a high level overview of the different states that we have. So we can see we have the on and off states here. Mm -hmm. We can add them to our graph. And the, the pins on the nodes now control how and when you flow from one state to another. Okay. So to begin with, we just want to start in the off state. So we select the off state. But then at some point, we're going to want to say, okay, well, we switch from the off state, off state to the on state. And this is where we need a signal. Okay. Um, yeah. Signals is another concept that I haven't really covered yet, but it's, it's a way of one, one thing communicating an event happening to something else. And this transitions from graph to graph? To yes. So I think uh, users, if they had used the uh, modular behavior trees with AI prior in uh, the engine, they would know what signals Yes, signals there, there will be a very similar concept there. Um, so what I'm going to do is add a signal to the off state, which I'll just call switch on. And now we can see that actually this is an output on the off state. So we can say, when it decides to switch on, we're going to switch to the on state. Okay. Of course, now what we're missing is the logic to actually trigger that switch on. So I'm going to basically do almost the same logic that we had before. Um, action input. When the action is pressed, you want to switch on the put type. In the key, the case again. Yes, yes. So again, if button A is pressed, this time we want to actually send that signal. So we want to say switch on. And um, we have, once we've declared a, a signal, we have a, a number of options. We can listen for that signal or we can send it. Mm -hmm. In this case, we want to actually send it. So you can also use these signals to communicate between two AI or something like that. Oh, cool. Like, Maybe you want to damage another entity, you would send a damage signal to that entity. Um, so I, I guess in the essence, I'm, since it's beta, but it would eventually talk to DRS and yes, actually send I, all, through that. Yeah, all these different systems will just be able to send signals to one another. Mm -hmm. It's also how programmers communicate information to the designers. So this start, stop, and update is literally just somebody in code saying, mm -hmm. send this signal. So now if we go in game we should effectively have the same logic that we had before. We don't. So we have to debug it. Yeah. So one thing we can actually do, we can bring up Siva. The debugger, because this is very experimental, is mm. it's, 
it's primitive at the moment. But what we can do is just bring up some basic information about the state of our objects. Ah, okay, so it is actually working. We can see from the state machine that it's on. The thing that we've missed is, and this is me being very stupid, what we need to do now is in our on state, we actually need to indicate that we're on. Ah. Yeah. So, so it helps with the, you know, debugging. Yeah. So this is where the default start and stop actually come in handy, because basically what we want to say is when we start in this state, mm -hmm. then we want to turn our light on. Back to the switch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's a couple of things called switch here, so that might get a little bit confusing. But um, <laughs> light switch is very different from the switch we were using on the input. Um, and then we can do the particle, set the particle to visible again. I think if people had to use the, the flash implementation, they would know switches quite well, because I believe it interfaced with the flash, uh -huh. interfaces okay. with the menus. It is a fairly standard programming concept. Again, it's just new to flow graph users perhaps um okay so i'm actually going to have to duplicate a little bit of logic so just to quickly recap in the start we're going to switch both the light switch and particle meter on in the stop we're switching them off again okay and so now hooray press x and it works it works now, on top of this, we can very easily make it switch off again. Um, something that Schematic has is the concept of a timer. Um, I'll add one now. But a timer is just something that it basically sends you a signal once, once the time has run out. So we can give it a duration. Okay. We can do it in frames, in seconds, or we can even do it random. Um, let's just give it for five seconds. We can also say whether it starts automatically or whether we have to actually tell it to start and whether it repeats. Okay. But in this case, we can literally just use it as an output again from the on state to the off state. Uh -huh. So now, again, if I go into game, I can press A to turn it on, and after five seconds... We pray it'll work, and it did. Hey. Success. Awesome.